This is a variation and expanded It's the Music Stupid because this is about jazz box sets. Like when I went low, they're jazz box sets. Uh, but these are compact disc box sets because this was a topic that I had on my list. I keep a list of uh, top future topics, uh, things I'd like to showcase for my collection. But a viewer suggested this just yesterday and it just it, it brought it to the top of my list. And I decided why not uh, present this because I... I enjoy CDs, mainly downstairs in this room here, but I do play them up upstairs or when I have friends over when I don't want to flip records. And the, the magic about uh, the box set, it really came about more so during the compact disc era. Of course, there were classical box sets and the occasional rock, but not that many in vinyl. Uh, the special Library of Congress, Smithsonian box sets you get online and the world's greatest composers and the world's greatest country music and so on. And there were occasional box sets here and there, but the, the CD era really, it flourished and you could get outtakes and alternate, just entire catalogs of artists. But I'm gonna dive in here on um, my jazz CDs and some of my favorite jazz box sets. While I'm talking right here, you're gonna see a scan of a portion of my collection, a portion of my collection that is on the uh, foundation down in the um, lower part of my split level here. And you can see how it's a perfect staging area for my jazz CDs. I have them also around on these uh, various uh, shelves around the room, the music room downstairs here. Let's start out with one of my favorites, and this is a massive set. Uh, this is Duke Ellington, the Centennial uh, Edition. This came out in 1999 that celebrated the 100th birthday of Duke Ellington. Arguably one of the greatest jazz composers, jazz musicians of all time. An amazing artist who brought jazz to the masses over the years. But you can't deny the great piano playing, the great composing, the great ar arranging. I uh, wrote some great stuff with Billy Strayhorn. Uh, this is RCA Duke Ellington. A massive, massive set. Sometimes there is a little bit of a situation where sometimes box sets aren't easily accessible in terms of the way they're packaged and put together. But I love it, you know, getting away from the vinyl format, the LP format, the 12 inch format. Designers were ingenious. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. This is a beautiful booklet that comes in this one. But this one, as much as I love it, and I adore this set. It's got all these numbered multi-CDs that kind of make up imagery when you have them in the right order, <laughs> almost like a, a puzzle here. So it's not exactly the uh, most accessible box set in terms of grabbing volume 16 opposed to volume two or something, but it really showcases the great work of Duke Ellington. Another box set during the CD era that I really like um, that to me, uh, Rhino Records, obviously the catalog wing of uh, WIA at the time, now Warner Music, Warner Electra Atlantic, put out a great series of Atlantic uh, box sets, of jazz box sets. And this is, again, another one of my favorites. This is the heavyweight champion, John Coltrane, the complete Atlantic recordings. Uh, these are the stereo mixes. And again, this is a more accessible design style where you have all the various volumes with a cover image that sort of emulates uh, the catalog. It doesn't have one album per, it really expands on a situation. So there's basically six discs, again, with the obligatory booklet, which is great. There's usually great jazz essays. But you, you get here the entire Atlantic catalog with some alternate takes of the great uh, John Coltrane. And now something a little more esoteric, a little out there, experimental is beauty is a rare thing the complete atlantic recordings of ornette coleman again atlantic succeeded in doing these wonderful box sets uh from the late 90s uh, into the 2000s and beyond of course uh you don't get as many now but this was the heyday of the box set again you get these various illustrated uh photographed color palettes of the artist. They use, in this case, the same image. Uh, I think it's more interesting when they use different images throughout, but you know, artistically people make a choice, artist designers make a choice. I think um, 
the booklet actually adds to it and you get a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, documentation here. So Ornette Coleman, Beauty is a Rare Thing, Rhino Atlantic Records. These are two wonderful Coltrane selections. This is the cl complete 1961 Village Vanguard recordings. Again, not everything was released expanded on here. Again, a uh, color palette of different illustrations. And of course, um, the b added booklet. Great collection, great concert. Amongst them, uh, the most famous concerts of Coltrane that had been released on vinyl. And the other one is Coltrane, the classic quartet, the complete impulse. This is, again, the classic quartet. Now, sometimes during this period, labels would issue a limited edition to begin with, something a little special. This has a tin metal slip case with almost like a leather et, leather et folio. And this is actually an album. This is where the term album came out during the era of the 78s and the 10 inches. This is why we call them albums. This isn't like a photo album. This is it. Uh, so this is wonderful. Again, it has the multi-discs. It has some uh, alternate versions. And it goes through all the great series of albums that he did for for Impulse Records uh, during his, uh, his legacy, his output on Impulse Records. And of course, like all these, there's a wonderful uh, book here that goes through all track by track as well as uh, essays on John Coltrane and his tenure at Impulse Records. The Classic Quartet, Complete Impulse Studio Recordings. I don't think you can have a good jazz collection without uh, talking about Ella Fitzgerald. And she is amongst, uh, in fact, I did a video a couple years ago on the greatest uh, female vocalist of all time, and I gave it to Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, we could debate about that. It's very subjective, objective, subjective. I twisted that around in my last video and I got called out on uh, using the word the wrong way. And I totally understand that. Uh, this is the complete Ella Fitzgerald songbook. Of course, uh, Verve Records was Norman Grant's label. He actually managed Ella Fitzgerald and started uh, Verve because of Ella for her. And then it opened up and with all those great other artists he had over the years. Now, this is a wonderful collection here. You have these larger boxes here of the, for instance, George and Ira Gershman, Gershwin series. Uh, this is conducted, arranged by Nelson Riddle. Fantastic. With the Bernard Buffett uh, artwork that was on the original Verve records. And there's individual images and, and design folio in there of those cover images. We have the Ella Fitzgerald uh, and Duke Ellington with orchestra combination of records. And of course, we have the, these other individual records, which to me are sublime and some of the greatest uh, output in recorded music. Ella Fitzgerald sings Roger, uh, Rogers and Hart. We have uh, Irving Berlin songbook. You know, songbooks were covered everyone from Frank Sinatra to Mel Torme to even the the instrumentalist as well. Uh, this is uh, the Harold Arlen songbook. We have the Cole Porter, of course, songbook, one of my favorites. We have the Jerome Kern songbook, and then that's a later recording on, on Verve, and of course, Johnny Mercer songbook. Uh, just an incredible collection of the wonderful work of uh, Ella Fitzgerald. And this was a gift by one of my photographers one Christmas years ago. And this is a beautiful uh, box set. Uh, it's got a little bit of a shelf wear, unfortunately. It looks like someone drove their motorcycle across it. And I'm usually uh, really particular about my uh, CDs and my uh, records. But this is Ella Fitzgerald and Duke Ellington on Verve, the Cote d'Azur Concerts. A beautiful uh, collection of this series of wonderful uh, multi-disc sets. Again, with these beautiful color jewel cases. I'm not usually a fan of jewel cases. I like when they do something a little different. I know, you know, if you're a CD person watching this, we quibble about that. You know, to me, the the spokes on these things break. They take up too much room. 
A lot of people don't like the uh, digipacks and the inner sleeves. I happen to like those. And they say, oh, they scratch the CDs. Not if you don't, uh, if you don't take good care of them. But um, I've never had a, a scratched issue because I take uh, care of these. But uh, you see what these are like. And of course, like everything else here, uh, there is uh, the overview. And this has a spiral bound book form that talks about these concerts in the 60s. And uh, obviously wonderful essays and track by track annot annotations here. Considering they shrunk down from LPs to CDs to the smaller, what, five and a half inch, whatever the format was uh, of CDs, there was a compromise in design. And most of the time, good art directors and designers went with that and made it work out. Of course, uh, we could uh, argue all day about type treatments and typeface and these miniature type things. It's just horrendous, but um, you know, sometimes they make it work the best they can. Now, one of the most famous uh, sets, and I've showed this on different videos, and I just adore this set, but this is one you almost need to wear protective gloves to open this and to play with this. This is the complete Bill Evans on Verve. This is the original edition. It did come out later uh, with, in a paper cardboard box. This is the metal. It's meant to patina and rust over time. It started out really clean, and this is like 20 years now this came out. It opens up, and you gotta be careful if you cut yourself, you uh, make sure you had your tetanus shots updated. And it slides out. It's not really an efficient design. Here are the CDs, right? And they kind of fold out like this. And this is, I don't know how many CDs, this is 20 CDs maybe? I don't ex remember exactly. Uh, but this is fabulous music. And of course, uh, Bill Evans, you know, his Riverside stuff's probably my favorite, but the Verve stuff is pretty neat too. And this is really wonderful. But I do like the nature of this book. Now think about this, as much as someone like me likes vinyl, this would be the most ridiculous thing to have this massive. This would be 40 LPs or 30 LPs or something with this expanded uh, work. But the way the book is designed, the art direction on this, the essays, the song listings, who plays on what, it's a spectacular collection of Bill Evans, a piano player, his wonderful work on Verve Records. Uh, so this is amongst my favorite. Strange as it is, bizarre as it is, it's like an object of art to sit on the shelf. But I seriously pull these out and play it. When I had my office in San Francisco, we had this ground floor loft. I had at that point in the height of the CD era, five disc Denon changer. I don't no longer have that. And we'd come in the morning and sometimes we'd pick an artist like Bill Evans, load up the five disc changer, put on random a lot. And it would literally take almost all day to play it all. And that would be our soundtrack for the day. This is another one that I like. This is the, um, <laughs> every time I take this, in fact, I think I've done a few videos. This is almost like a Rubik's Cube. This is Herbie Hancock. And I always forget how it opens. It slides up. And this is literally the idiot's test of opening up a compact disc. Look at this. It's cool ass, but it's the stupidest design, but I actually kind of like it. Now this also has come out on a regular edition. Oh, here we go. There we go. Now I remember, see? You pull it up, but it's hard to tell. Like there's no, like, I could put a little dot on there to know which side it happens. I'm not gonna, <laughs> this is silly. Four CDs. Talk about space saver or space waster, I should say. So what this is, this is Herbie Hancock box. This is Sony Music. This contains the Maiden Voyage, Sorcerer Period, um, Dolphin Dance, this Rain Dance, Butterfly. This is the kind of electronic period when he was getting, uh, you know, moving with the electronic stuff. It is a cool box musically. It's a weird ass box design wise. 
again, it's like conceptual art at its um, more obscene. <laughs> obscene is the wrong word, but it's a beautiful collection. Again, uh, this is one of those collections that they changed over time. I think the initial uh, design was this, and then it changed to something that actually was uh, more appropriate for good and not evil. I know I keep mentioning about this is one of my favorites and that's one of my favorites and there is one of my favorites, but this is seriously uh, musically one of my favorites. Again, it comes down to the music over the format, but to have a vinyl version of this is friggin' crazy. Uh, this is Mosaic and this is the complete capital recordings of the Nat Cole Trio, Nat King Cole Trio. Uh, these recordings were originally on Capitol Records. Uh, Mosaic was the uh, series put out, label put out by, curated by Michael Cascuna, worked for Blue Note, and eventually bought the Francis Wolf Photo Archive, and now is back with Blue Note Records. But this series of Mosaic, um, I have friends who subscribed and got a lot of their CDs. They did some records on vinyl, some on mostly CDs, They but they dappled in vinyl too. This is an 18 CD set. I'm not going to show you all of it. Some of these are single, double discs, basically. Uh, some of them are triple discs in the thick uh, jewel case that comes in here along with a book. Uh, the signature of Mosaic is the black and white archive, the black and white photography. So they never really emulated a specific cover. But there are large books in here. This music is the trio. Every take, every version. Route 66. Straighten Up and Fly Right, the great, great songs in that call. I love his piano playing. He's amongst my favorite jazz slash pop artists. He became more of a pop singer into the 1960s, but this stuff to me is the golden stuff. This is that wonderful, wonderful uh, trio here. Now, when my buddy um, Coleman passed away, my good friend Coleman, uh, when we had the Coleman collection, he actually had the vinyl version of this, which is 27 LPs, and that was uh, one set that I kept from his collection. But as much as I love that, and I cherish that for a lot of reasons, I go to and pull out the compact disc, because it's just easier to pull out. This is Billie Holiday, and this is the Verve stuff on Billie Holiday. Nor again, Norman Grant's uh, label, 1945 to 1959, the great Billie Holiday blues jazz singer. This is an impeccable box. This, again, it, this is the first edition that came, you know, with these uh, almost leather et inserts that are totally over the top again we have the wonderful album folio here right here just wonderful wonderful music on clef records and verve which is norman grants there's stops and starts there's full takes there's alternate versions like literally the opposite of a uh, ella fitzgerald i just adore adore her some people feel that all they need is like a hits you know body and soul or something but again, this has the whole, you know, documentary, uh, literary documentary, track by track overview of this great artist, Billy Holiday, one of the greatest artists ever that ever, you know, took the stage and, and played with some of the greatest jazz musicians of the day. I just love this box set. Verve, again, that takes the Verve and the Clef record recordings there. Another one, we're going back now uh, to Atlantic and Rhino, the complete Atlantic recordings, 1956 to 1961 of Mingus, Charlie Mingus Records. Same kind of format as the earlier um, Rhino jazz records I showed, jazz CD packages I showed. It has a great, again, uh, document book with Ellington, one of the great composers in jazz. Uh, his main instrument was uh, the bass. Here's a more recent one. This came out in the last two years, and this was uh, from a Blue Note Tone Poet box set. This is Lee Morgan, The Complete Live at the Lighthouse. Uh, this is Hermosa Beach in, in California. These are from 1970. Now, this came out as a wonderful vinyl box and a CD. And at this point, I figured this is multi-nights uh, that he did in 1970 at the Lighthouse. And I just figured the way I listen to this, I prefer having this on compact disc and the vinyl. The vinyl I hear is beautiful, but when you have the, you know, more or less the same sets night after night after night, uh, to me, this works better in the 
for me in the compact disc format. It has these wonderful, I mean, come on, this is so friggin' California. Lee Morgan on the beaches of Southern California. How cool is that? Uh, this would have been, I mean, I never saw Lee Morgan and I could have seen Lee Morgan. He came through San Francisco at this time and I really didn't know of all the jazz artists back when I was uh, buying jazz, like starting around actually 1970. This would have been my first year of buying a jazz record. I didn't really get in until 72 or so into really buying more and more jazz. Two artists in particular, one of the you know founding members really of a bebop is Bud Powell. This is a complete Bud Powell on Verve. Again, Verve was famous like the old days, like, you know, at the time, putting these wonderful folios together, these albums together. Uh, and, and this one is more bound. Sometimes they're loose and they come out and are separate. This is a bound version, of course, Bud Powell, the great piano player of the bebop era and beyond. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful collection of, of great, great music and great side men uh, with him that he played with. Again, um, just an amazing artist. You know, goodbye pork pie hat. The guy that sported the best pork pie hats ever, and that's Lester Young, great sax player. This is the session, the complete yep, Lester Young studio session on Verb. Now, again, I I'm probably beating a dead horse here, but as you can see when I go through these, most of these have the word complete. These are considered complete, all the, records, uh, all the releases they did. Now, some go in and take a deeper dive and showcase outtakes and, you know, abridged versions of the songs, of the pieces of music, some don't. But again, again, one of my favorites, look at that, look at that friggin' hat. Again, one of the great uh, artists of all time. I need to only show a picture of him wearing a hat, otherwise I don't want to show it. There's like the iconic uh, illustration of, wonderful illustration of, uh, Lester Young uh, sporting his hat. Just love this stuff. I'll throw in another mosaic box set, um, and that is uh, this. This this is actually a later release. This just came out a few years ago. Uh, they do few and far between releases. I don't know if they're even still in existence, but every once in a while something creeps out and they put it out on CD only now. And this is uh, Hank Mobley's Blue Note Sessions, 1963 to 1970. Of course, the same cover on everything. Uh, this came out in 2019. I don't know if these are available. Now, this is one, this actually does showcase uh, the proper albums. And sometimes you just collect the albums. This is Stan Getz. This is the Bossa Nova years. These are the ones that most people know of Stan Getz. They all know Getz and Gilberto, or Gilberto, uh, the great Bossa Nova, that whole craze that happened in 1960, 61. Uh, and this has them all, that period. Jazz Samba, Stan Getz and Charlie Bird, the great guitar player. Uh, this has Getz and uh, Luis Bonfa. Wonderful, again, artwork, that modern artwork there. I love that stuff. Of course, the most infamous of all, and the one that if you don't have this in your collection, you're not a jazz fan at all, and it's very accessible. Getz, Gilberto, Astrid Gilberto. Uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, a beautiful record, great sounding record, so many additions. Uh, I would say on vinyl, just for the, get the Verve acoustic sound series, you know, for 30 to $40, and uh, you, you won't need anything else, really. Uh, you have the big band Bossa Nova, arranged and conducted by Gary McFarlane. Again, the theme of all this modern artwork. And last but not least, uh, this is uh, Stan Getz and the Spanish guitarist Lorindo Almeida, uh, who also did a wonderful record. I'm a big fan of uh, a jazz combo that doesn't get a lot of love, and their records are so cheap. And that's the Modern Jazz Quartet. There's a wonderful record the jazz uh, the the Modern Jazz Quartet uh, did with Lorindo Almeida, a great Spanish guitar player, which is just a stunning, wonderful record. Stan Getz, the Bossa Nova years. In closing, I, I'm going to present a series of box sets, Prod, probably the most famous jazz artist ever. If you were to ask someone to name a jazz artist and they weren't into jazz, my guess is uh, they would answer Miles Davis. And uh, whether people know his entire catalog is probably not something that most people know about. They might know of Kind of Blue or just know him 
uh, because he is so famous and so iconic in a way. So I'm going to close out with a series of box sets, CD box sets. To me, it really showcases what what is great about the compact disc box set, and especially in jazz here. But before I get to those, I'm going to showcase this little gem. Uh, I don't see this a lot. I don't even know if it's still in print. This is the original mono recordings from Columbia Records. This has all the records he did for Columbia in mono versions of them. Of course, uh, I'll just go through them quickly. I don't even need to name them. Those of you who know jazz, uh, this is great. I mean, a lot. Of, this is one that some people actually either love or just don't like because it has a very Spanish Gil Evans arranged classical. It's really a combination of classical and jazz. I think it's just a, really a beautiful record. Uh, Porgy and Bess, of course. Uh, at Newport with uh, Thelonious Monk. Keep it short. Maybe we'll do another edition at some point. Um, there's uh, Milestones, obviously. Round Midnight. I mean, there's not one clunker in this. Uh, jazz Tracks, which uh, contains... It's sort of a combo of the, the soundtracks he did uh, for the French film that came out as a 10-inch, but Columbia issued it with other tracks. And, of course, Miles Ahead with that damn white woman on my cover. Again, you get your booklet here, and uh, it's a good way to get all his early records. This yeah. is a wonderful series. And again, these aren't for everybody because these contain every take for the most part, uh, every outtake, every version, sometimes repeated versions. And I'm going to start with this one. This is Miles Davis, eight, seven steps. Miles Davis, number three. So they're numbered. It's hard to see here. This is number three. This is the seven steps the complete Miles Davis Columbia recordings from 1963 and 1964. Again, you have your album format, beautifully designed and obviously wonderfully curated with the book. And there's essays on here and photographs from that period of the performances. Uh, this is when... Uh, Winton Kelly, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb, uh, and um, Coltrane departure in April 1980. So it's that period of miles. I won't go through each one in detail. This is the Jack Johnson stuff, and you know that stuff. I mean, this is the this is the closest he's come to being a rock and roller in a way with John McLaughlin on that crazy <laughs> guitar. But you have every version. Look at that kind of blind spot varnish, I guess you'd call it. Again, you got your book. This is the complete sessions. Look at John McLaughlin, man. If John McLaughlin always played at this, I don't every record of his. You know, I like him a lot. I like his um, Goals Beyond, his acoustic album. And sometimes he got a little too frenetic for me. Uh, just really crazy. This is my favorite. This is the Bitches Brew. And again, I've said this before. I got Bitches Brew in 1970, when it, soon after it came out. And I didn't really get it. It was two out there for me. Three years later, someone played it in the store. I first got a job in, and I said, what's that? And it was uh, magic. Yeah, I loved it. This has everything. Remember, Teo Maceo, the producer on this, recorded, they just recorded a lot of jams, a lot of stuff. And Teo Maceo takes the tape, takes the tapes, and edits them down to make bitches brew. This is everything. This is a funky cluster of wonderful fusion this is a killer record. I would say, you know, obviously everyone has their favorite period of uh, of Miles Davis. Some people are into the the electric stuff. Some people like the more, you know, kind of. That's fair enough. But I tell you, this is a killer collection. There, this is Miles Davis number four. This is the quintet, nineteen sixty five to nineteen sixty eight. So of course here. You have Wayne Shorter, Tony Williams, Ron Carter, and Herbie Hancock. A, an amazing period. Miles Davis, uh, like um, John Mayall, is a, and um, Art Blakey, great talent scout, had great jazz artists kind of go through his band and his uh, quintet at various times. The second great quintet. What a great, great record with some great compositions, obviously by Wayne Shorter, Miles, Miles Davis there. We got uh, Miles Davis, Gil Evans. So obviously Gil Evans orchestrated. This has Quiet Nights. This has 
that white woman on my cover of my record there. This has um, just wonderful. Again, this has the proper album with outtakes. Sketches of Spain is the one I was was thinking of again, which I showed earlier in mono. So this has all that period, and then it has alternate things uh, produced and uh, arranged by Gil Evans, orchestrated by Gil Evans. A, and a great, great series, uh, Complete Silent Way. This is one of my favorite. Silent Way, In a Silent Way is my favorite Miles Davis album. So this has, again, the way these pieces were edited together, the way this stuff was recorded, uh, this, again, has all the curation, the wonderful musicianship. This is a killer. This is the complete, in a silent way, sessions by Miles Davis. Fantastic collection. Then you got Miles Davis and John Coltrane. And lastly, probably one of the most coolest, kick-ass, records and this one is definitely long out of print i think most of these are unfortunately but this is uh on the corner stuff look at that three-dimensional cover how cool ass is that this is miles a complete on the corner sessions funky ass shit wonderful music god the fly glasses come in him and Yoko should have gone out on a, a Saturday night in New York with their glasses, man. They were cool. Thanks for watching. We'll do another one someday if you want to. If you want to sit, uh, have me go through these again. But thanks a lot for watching. Mazzy loves you. See you next time.